Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Bigak Ahmed, and welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be watching a video from the One True Message Foundation. This is a Dawah channel where the gentleman goes out, very, very beautiful and moral human being, moral gentleman, who goes out, he doesn't debate people, he goes ahead and spreads the message of Islam and speaks about Christian, Muslim, Jewish theology with people. He goes ahead and enlightens people on what the one true message of Islam is, the one true message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of God Almighty is. And this is how you should spread your religion. This is how you should interact with human beings. There are very few channels that actually do this. This is the pinpoint... Um, of my channel where I try to really go from is just talk about theology, talk about specific subjects, try and understand them more myself, educate myself. Knowledge is power. And let God do the rest. Your personal connection with God Almighty, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what is going to lead you to the truth. It's going to lead you to righteousness. It's going to lead you to salvation. This is what is going to lead the individual person. We are all on our own journey. We all have our own test. And it is very, very important to establish that personal connection with God. There are very few Muslim uh, YouTubers online that actually do this that are more in a debate kind of tactic or debate kind of world where they lead their egos first and they lead the positioning of I'm right before I even start the conversation rather than trying to enlighten or educate someone agree to disagree type of deal and this happens also with many many pr Christian YouTubers and Christian preachers online I'm not going to name any in specific um, but the Muslim ones, this One True Message Foundation channel is beautiful. And uh, Uthman ibn Farooq, uh, Sheikh Uthman, is also a really good channel. He's not very immoral. He speaks very, very wisely. He speaks very morally. He lets the other person talk, you know, and he seeks knowledge as well as gives knowledge back. And I really, really like that about these conversations. One also, one thing also before we start right here is not every single Christian that comes up to to someone on the side of the street is going to be knowledgeable or very confident in what they believe in or even know what they're talking about. And not every Muslim that walks up to a Christian uh, preacher on the street is going to be knowledgeable. Um, most people are ignorant. Most people have no clue why they believe what they believe. They've never opened their Bible. They've never opened their Quran. And they don't really understand the real concepts of why they believe what they believe. They kind of just believe what they, what they do, what they grew up with, and then kind of... Um, you know, formate or mold a position around that. And then, you know, from there they have their jobs, they work, they take care of their families, you know, they're in their relationships, they're doing what they got to do. And the religion is like a basis to make them feel comfortable. So they can always go back to it. But they're not, it's not something that most people like sit down and just study and read books and do all these things. That is a journey that I've been through recently. It's something that has really enlightened me and opened my mind and opened my heart. It has made my life honestly so, so much. Much better. So I advise everyone, please open your religious scriptures and understand why you believe what you believe. It is very important when someone asks you a question about why you believe what you believe or, you know, what is going on in the Bible, what is going on in the Quran that you are able to answer. Let's hop right into it. According to you, according to what, you, to what you've been taught, did Jesus Christ uh, die on the cross? He did. Yeah, he did. And was... He God at the time when he died? Yeah. Okay, so did God die on the cross? Well, I think the fact that he saying that he died may have been a way of explaining it to humans. If that makes sense. He may have died, but it might have been because he was God, his soul might have not been a soul, let's say. He was a spirit. Well, Yes. Yeah. Hard to explain, I say. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm struggling to connect the dots here. Because if, if on the one hand you say he died, and on the other hand you say he was God, then I'm connecting those two together and saying so God died on the cross, according for for Christians. So, God, so when God says I don't die in the first place, I'm immortal. In First Timothy six sixteen, how does that tie up with your concept that he died? So he's, God is immortal. Yes, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is seated, uh, sat at the right hand of the Father. So God, God is immortal. God can die. Well, I suppose it depends what you define by death. Separation of soul from body. Well, I don't consider that dark. Because Jesus says that whoever, what, what whoever do you... knows me shall never die. Sure. Therefore, that would fit your definition of mortality. So what do you understand by death? 
I don't believe in death. You don't believe in death? No, I believe that if you're a Christian or you believe in Jesus Christ and you accept your sins and you repent for your sins, sure. you should go to the kingdom of heaven and never die. Sure, sure, sure. Obviously in paradise no, no one dies, no doubt. Dies. Okay. But on earth, but on earth, who died for your sins then? Well, Jesus, but he died on earth. But he is immortal in the sense that he is wish in heaven. Mm -hmm. well, when you die, does your soul stop existing? So what's the difference in your death and his death? The difference is he was God. And God is was there at the beginning and he's there at the end. Therefore he was born. Right. That's okay. Different. The difference is I came into existence when God decided to come into existence. But didn't Jesus come into existence when God decided for him to come into existence? No, because it's the Trinity. He was always there. He is God. But whose word is he? He is the word of God. Um my understanding is that Jesus was sent by God. He was sent by the Father. And when he was actually leaving the people, he he was leaving. He told them that I'm leaving you and that I'm going to return to the Father. Um, there's a lot of separation between Jesus and the Father in the Holy Bible. And this is something that I find very interesting when a lot of Christians make the claims that they're making. And like he's asking, he's asking very logical questions. Like, you know, can God die? Like, God is eternal. God cannot die. God does not eat. God does not sleep. God does not need mercy. God does not need anything from anyone. He is the beginning. He is the end. Um, Jesus definitely has a beginning, and Jesus definitely has an end. He died. He was born. He did not know everything. He had to eat. He had to sleep. Um, and saying God took a bodily form is very very blasphemous in the eyes of you know pure monotheists um, muslims jews when they see this concept of jesus is god this is blasphemous to us more or less the term of endearment um son of god where you know other prophets and other people were also called the sons of god um, for instance king david peace and blessings be upon him he literally called himself the begotten son of god in the psalms um does that mean that he was birthed um of god just like jesus i mean if it has to do with not having a father adam had no father no mother eve had no father no mother um or is that the son and daughter of god is adam god it's very confusing um to really really understand it's just kind of like a he say she say thing that is very hard to conceptualize especially when you actually read the theologies you read these sourcings there's a lot of things that get your head spinning and if your heart is not necessarily accepting something it's very hard for your mind to and if your heart does accept something but then your mind goes ahead and rejects it because it makes no logical sense it kind of damages that whole entire aspect in your heart um and there's a sense of denial. It's kind of like, you know, finding out someone cheated on you and not wanting to believe it. So you go ahead on with your days saying, you know what, I'm just going to pretend it never happened. I'm just going to live with this person and I'm going to live in a lie. And uh, it's very, very hard to conceptualize this, especially when people don't even believe it in the first place. People come to my comment section and like, you need Jesus. You're, you know, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. It's like, well, you need to explain to me what you mean by that, really, more or less, because I have Jesus. I follow the teachings of Jesus. I pray. I fast. I'm, you know, I'm very, very, very um, honorable when I speak. I don't, you know, curse people. I don't, you know, I'm a very moral person. I help people. I give to charity. I don't eat pork. I don't drink alcohol. I don't intoxicate myself. I don't do these things. So, I try and follow the teachings of Jesus because the teachings of Jesus came from God Almighty directly. These are the ordained teachings of God Almighty. And uh, I really don't know what the concept of, you know, Jesus dying has to do with God being all powerful, all merciful to begin with, all loving to begin with. Why does God need to sacrifice his perfect son or someone so perfect to, to forgive me? I, does God not have the power to forgive us regardless of slaughtering a perfect human being or coming down in flesh and weakening himself it really doesn't you know conceptualize in my mind and something should conceptualize in your mind if you want to believe it if something to be believed it needs to be conceptualized in your head it needs to make sense god gave us intellect god gave us 
you know, free will. God gave us brains for a reason. I'm blessed for that intellect. I'm blessed for that brain. Like animals don't have intellect. They're all fight or flight. They're all just reactive to their instincts. That's not something we are. We're not reactive to our instincts. When we're hungry, we don't just go ahead and rip things apart and eat things. It's not how it works. We can actually fast. Like as Muslims, we fast for a month in Ramadan. That is a control of our instincts. That shows us that we have free will. We have intellect. When I want to learn something like math, you don't need to give me a cookie to teach me 2 plus 2 is 4. You can just teach me 2 plus 2 is 4. I don't need negative or positive reinforcement to learn something. So he has a god? No. He is God. He is his word. What I say? He, he and the Father are one. So if is your word you? Uh, my word is me, yes. Your word is you? Yes. These are all my opinions. Right. So when you say that he is the word of God, uh, do you, how do you understand that? Because if he's the word of God, is that, is that God or is that some, another God? No, no, he is God. Right, he is God. He is the word of God on earth. So when he came on earth and he died, did God die? Uh, no, because he didn't really die. He just ascended into heaven. But if he didn't die, what, what happened to him? Well, his physical body obviously decayed. Well, actually, no, it didn't. It, well... So what actually happened on that? On that, his physical body did not decay. He resurrected, according to Christianity. Say that you believe he was crucified. Yeah. What? What is? If there's no death here, well, what actually happened? Well, they say he died within sort of like half an hour of him being on the cross. Within, well, not the sort of. Sure is, I mean, the crucifixion, the long, slow, painful death. So, painful death. so half an hour is quite short. Yeah, you know, exactly. Sure. That's my point. He didn't die. He didn't he die. Died, he died almost. Instantly on that cross. He died instantly on the cross. So he did die. His physical body perished. His physical body perished. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of contradicting here, and this is why you don't just pull a random Christian off the street. Now, this is why that's not this man's job. It's not the job of this man's channel. The job of this man's channel is to enlighten people about theology and to help them understand specific things. This man knows more about Christianity than the gentleman speaking that's a Christian. And this is very, very, very clear. How are you saying Jesus never died, God never dies, but he died on the cross for my sins? Okay, well, if he never died, then he didn't die for your sins. And then you said his body perished. Well, no, he resurrected, according to Christianity. So he's, he's very, very much all over the place. If he resurrected, one, and two, he doesn't die. He's the spirit of God, or you don't die. You die and you go to heaven and you, you're, you're all eternal. You live an eternal life then what's the point of anyone dying for your sins to begin with? They don't actually die then, do they? God didn't die for your sins, or Jesus did not die for your sins because he's never he never died. He's all eternal. He died and his soul is still there. His soul is still pure, and you know, he's not suffering. He's in heaven. So it's, it's very, very odd, the concept that this man specifically is bringing to the table. It doesn't make much sense. And his soul? We, we don't know his biology. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi from it. I know turned off the khair with it. A message. Is the physical body of Christ part of the Trinity? Go subscribe to their channel, by the way, down below. Very, very beautiful, beautiful uh, people over there at the One True Message Foundation. They give amazing, amazing, amazing information, amazing dawah, and they're very, very calming to watch and listen to. See? Well, no. No. It's not. Okay. So, where is the divine sacrifice? Yes. Yes. What's that one? Sorry? What's that one? Was it all just metaphorical? I mean, these are the questions we all have to ask. I mean, uh, this is about your. I mean, uh, um, what type of Christian are you? I'm a Lutheran. Lutheran? Okay, yeah. enlighten me. I converted from Anglicanism to Lutheranism. But I, I don't really like the organized church. So, sure. Because I, I, I don't believe it. If you go back to the original translations of the later books, the letters, bishop just refers to. You know, the leader, ecclesia, the word for church is just means people movement. So sure. It's always a nomadic sort of religion. I don't really believe in it. Sure, but sure. So you, I mean, you switch to that. But do you, you still have the concept of the Trinity as, as fundamental to your belief? Yes, I do. Yeah. I do, but I, I, like, uh, and I the, like to read... And the divine... I like to read the book and think about it more by itself. Yeah. Yeah. He says he doesn't like the, you know, controlled church. But he believes in the Trinity, which literally comes from the controlled church. Like, if you read the Bible... The Trinity isn't clear in there, so if you're just like a theo, uh, if you're just following theology, then everything you're saying is completely from a church, and then you're kind of mixing the church with a the theology, and you have no clue what you're even saying. Like even from a Christian basis, like Christians watching this are like, what? What is this guy saying?
The reason I'm a Lutheran is because it's one of the largest religions in Switzerland. Oh, is that where you're from? Okay. Uh, and this this concept of uh, original sin and a divine sacrifice come, being being the atonement for that sin that we are inheriting. Okay. The, yeah. Do you believe that's unjust in the first place? I just well, blew a water Well, you talked about original okay. sin. Original sin. Excellent. So we are born innocent. We are born innocent and we create our own sin. Excellent. So there's, so there's no requirement. Heaven belongs to the innocents and also the land of the children. Perfect. We're on the same page. We're on the same page on that one. So there is no need for a divine sacrifice. No, because if Because all humans are sinners. And how do we? How, how do those who came before Christ atone because for their the sins? Way, the way, well, they do. They've been risen. It says this in. Um, Sorry, you don't have to give the reference, but yeah. No, it says it somewhere in. Uh, I think it might be Revelation. Sure, it sure, sure. Or well, they rose from the dead. Sure. So I'll give you. I'll give you a nutshell of what Islam is. We believe, we, uh, when we when we sin, we turn back to God. Hmm. We repent for our sin. We rectify our ways. We follow that sin up with good deeds. Many ways to be forgiven for your sins. That's what we do. Excellent. And and there is no requirement for a human sacrifice to be atonement for be an atonement for that sin. There is no need anymore for a human sacrifice. Even the initial need uh, of of Jesus Christ dying, we don't. So he also doesn't believe in original sin, which Muslims don't believe in original sin. We believe that you're actually born pure. You're born with nothing on your record. Um, you're not born wanting to sin. You're born wanting to worship God Almighty. Then as you go into the world. Um, Satan has placed obstacle horses in your way to go ahead and lead you away from that initial uh, fitra or in initial instinct desp uh, position to go ahead and worship and, and follow the rulings of God. I believe that the human uh, sacrifice is required. This is not something which um, our religion or teachers or believes in. This is from paganism, human sacrifices, these sort of things, okay? Would you say Judaism is human sacrifice? Would you say Judaism is human uh, They don't believe in human sacrifices. No, they do believe in animal sacrifices. Yeah, sure. Animal sacrifices. I mean, we, we also have animal sacrifices during the month of Hajj, you know. Or you we say that's paganism. But that's not a... That's not, uh, for our sins. I know that Islam is very anti-paganism. Uh, anti it's anti... Is, I'm with you. Yeah, Islam is a purely monotheistic religion. Yeah. Okay. So that's our 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 foundational points are really focused on that monotheism. So anything which in, which can taint that we we reject wholeheartedly and, and completely. Um, so when it comes to the sacrifice, of I'm gonna stop it right here. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen to the brother here. He uh, may Allah bless him. And. Um, yeah, this was a very, very interesting conversation. It was really all over the place. The Christian gentleman did not know what he was talking about. This is I'm not going to put this against Christianity or any other Christians. This is kind of a, a bit a bit wild. He's just jumping around all over the place. Um, you have to have a stance. You have to have a standpoint. You have to know what you're talking about. Going back to the sacrificing of animals and sacrificing of people, if God Almighty wanted to ordain human sacrifice, I mean, when you look at Abraham, when he took his son to the mountain and he went to uh, kill his son, it was replaced with, an animal and this is because god almighty does not ordain human sacrificing especially your son it's, it's literally the same exact concept with jesus as god sent his son to die on the cross for your sins and same thing with abraham god told abraham go take your son to the mountain and go kill your son in judaism it is isaac that was taken to the mountain and in um islam it is Ismail, which makes complete sense as Ismail is the firstborn son of Abraham, the firstborn prophet child of Abraham. You would sacrifice sacrifice your firstborn. In you know, the story of Moses, the, the, the firstborns were you know sacrificed. It's always the firstborn, firstborn, firstborn that's sacrificed. When you look, when you even look at witchcraft and wizardry and how they go ahead and they uh, put curses and hexes on people, they sacrifice the firstborn. And this is very, very, very consistent throughout history is this firstborn, firstborn, firstborn son sacrifice. And Jesus is known to be the firstborn son of God. And, you know, uh, Ismail is known to be the firstborn son of Abraham. And these sacrifices were, you know, atoned to happen. Now, <laughs> Abraham's son was never sacrificed. Abraham's son was replaced. And... This is what the gentleman at the end was really, really talking about here. Is we have uh, sacrifices in Islam, but they're animal sacrifices. They're not human sacrifices. The shed of human blood or sacrifice a human being is non acceptable. And this concept of Jesus going ahead and dying 
on the cross for you as a human sacrifice is something that comes off very, very satanic in a way um, because this is a pagan type of you know theology that has come from paganism in the eyes of Jews and in the eyes of Muslims. And the Jewish people are the ones who were the original holders of the Old Testament, of the original scripture, of the original book. And they disagree very, very, very much with this whole entire human sacrifice concept and everything of this nature. They deny Jesus altogether, where Muslims do not deny Jesus at all. They do not deny his mother at all. Peace and blessings be upon him and his mother. And he will return for his second coming to defeat the Antichrist and defeat all of the deception of this earth, to bring peace on this earth, and to go ahead and finalize the complete um, teachings and word of God and way of living of God Almighty before the day of judgment. Thank you guys so much for coming in today. And until next time, free Palestine.